All right, I've got six o'clock. Let's call the meeting to order. Roxanne, if you would take roll. Excellent. If everyone would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation, please. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag. God, you are by your very nature good. And Lord, though your nature is good, your capacity is great. And so you are both good and great. And furthermore, your character is righteous. You say that righteousness exalts a nation, a state, or a community. I pray this evening that you would honor our commitment to do the work of caring for the needs of this city that we would do so with righteous debate and righteous deeds, that all would recognize that the righteous acts of this council would exalt this community. Through Christ we pray, amen. Has the council had time to review the agenda for this evening? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries, thank you. Tonight, I have an opportunity to appoint a new member of our council for our vacant seat. And before I do that, I'd like to introduce Michael, if you'd come on up and say a few words, introduce yourself to the council. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Michael Middleton. Um, I am a resident in Ward 3. I've lived in Iowa my entire life. Um, currently, I am living with my wife and 15-week-old daughter. Um, I have been employed by the Gates Corporation since 2011. Um, I started on the manufacturing floor as a laborer and have worked my way up to a supervisor's role in customer service. <clears throat> in these early years of my adulthood, I've become more interested in Iola and its future. As long as I continue to have the opportunity in Iola, I plan to reside here. That is the reasoning for me wanting to join the council as I want to do my part in helping our town grow and succeed. Iowa and its community has done right by me, and I want to do the same for it. It is my understanding as a city council member that I am the voice for the people, and I won't lose sight of that. I am always open to listening to the community's opinions and proposals. I will, I will approach every topic with an open mind and will ensure that everybody has the same opportunity to voice their opinions. I feel that with my leadership experience, that I am capable of transitioning my knowledge to the city council role. I understand the importance of this role and I will treat it with the utmost respect. I am grateful for this opportunity to join the council and I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> he did a pretty good job of introducing himself. <laughs> Uh, based on that, I'd like to appoint Michael Middleton to fill the empty position from Ward 3. I will make a motion to accept the mayor's appointment of Michael Middleton to fill the empty position in Ward 3. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you. From sitting next to one of my oldest daughter's schoolmates to sitting next to the next kid down schoolmate. <laughs> I know. I just keep getting older. Okay, this is the Kansas and United States Constitution. Yeah. So if you place your right hand, raise your hand. I, Michael Middleton. I, Michael Middleton. Do solemnly swear. Do so solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And the Constitution. 
and faithfully discharge the duties and faithfully discharge the duties of council member of the city of Iola, Kansas. Of the council member of the city of Iola, Kansas. Right here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just got... Yeah. Yeah. I think... Yeah. Guys all need to quit growing up. <laughs> Thank you. Now I get to tell Madison I'm sitting next to you. So. All right. Very well. Public comments. Do we have any public comments at this time? I now have three. I've got to ask you, has your dad been? Yes, ma'am. I used to clean your grandma's and grandpa's teeth <laughs> many moons before, <laughs> and your mother's. Um, I wanted to remind you, back maybe two years, maybe three, when two men come up here and they were begging to extend their house permit to make it better and I stood up and praised him I said they're working on that house you know, all need to go buy that house on Cottonwood and uh, Carpenter. Carpenter they have added a huge gigantic room to the east and a double car garage and something else I haven't had the nerve to walk up there but it really is looking good and I thought I praise you for going ahead and letting them do that because they've done a great job and it's going to be a nice house for someone. Okay, the second thing I wanted to say was um, I am starting the football project again and so if you hear me begging for money I was telling someone the other day they said well the school really should pay for that and I said wait a minute I go back let me look there may be a couple in the room that don't go back. They may go back as far as I do. Mo most people don't go back as far as I do. I remember the school had that football stadium until 07, and they didn't do anything with it, too. So it's everyone's job to help this thing get better. And I really think that's what we're trying to do in the whole city. I'm really pleased with what's going on in our city and what's happening with all the new things and new people coming in, but we've got to take care of our old people, and I don't mean me, I mean the stadium. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments? All right, nothing heard. Has the council reviewed the consent agenda for this evening? I have, and I'll make a motion to approve it. Second it. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you. Let's move on to roundtable. Item A, governance and council size. Sid? Mr. Mayor, m members of council, I kind of put together as part of the agenda just a, kind of a series of questions that... Um, are some of the first things that I think about when we're having this discussion, and uh, also kind of what I think if we if we want to continue to have this discussion about um, reducing the size of council, um, how we might want to go about doing that. So other than that, I really just would leave it up for council to to have the conversation um, that they requested. Does anybody have any comments? Well, I'm not necessarily in favor of reducing the size of the council. I think what we have has worked well, and uh, if we reduce it, uh, I think there will be times when it might be more difficult to have a quorum. And so uh, I don't, I think what we have done, I don't know of anything that being an eight member council and a mayor, I don't know of any problem that's come up that we haven't addressed. So I'm in favor of keeping it that way. I've had calls both ways. Um, I first thought that we should reduce it, and uh, I'm still kind of thinking that way.
I say I'm, I'm more in favor to keep it the way it, that it is currently. I was on that charter ordinance committee when we discussed the different sizes of councils and how it would be developed and how it would run. And it just seems to me, you know, that this is a pretty good fair number of people with a good representation. I mean, you, you look around the table at the representation of our city from, you know, age and gender to where we live to what we do. I think we've got a really good wide variety of people here that bring different ideas and different knowledge. And by keeping it this size, we can continue to bring all of that to the table. I like the idea of having at least one representative from each ward. That's good. Yeah, I like I like the idea of four wards and a representative from each personally. I guess where I'm really coming from on this is it's the one thing that I've heard over and over since I've been on the council. There's one individual in my ward who's reached out to me who's opposed to reducing the council, but I think it's been something that's it's been in place for six years now, and again, something that I hear regularly is they'd like to see it reduced. So I personally just think we should put it up for a public referendum in 2018, 2019, whenever the next vote is, and let the, let the public decide how they're governed. And I don't really think, you know, much further into that. Without going into some long treaty on civil government, um, I, I would say that, Sid, your advice on how to move forward on this, if we decide to move forward, seems pretty good about holding the public forum um, and then the follow-up discussion through us. What uh, I think we might be more beneficial is if we, if we actually come up with plans rather than talking in this kind of abstract, if you say, here's the number, here's the plan, here is what I propose, that way you can actually get criticism back and forth rather than should we have theoretically five members or theoretically seven members or theoretically nine members and without, again, the big long civil treaty on government, uh, you, we might get some more concrete information there when we go into that public forum. But I agree with you as well that ultimately I think it does need to be a referendum. So why do people want to see it reduced? Yeah, what's the reason? What's the reason uh, for it? I've not heard that from anybody that. really. I, I've not heard Nobody's that discussion. So that. Donna, do you have something to say? <laughs> We put it to a public vote. I remember because I voted for five. And we put it to the public vote. And they voted for this many. And I probably go to more council meetings than anyone except you guys and the people that work here. And I think the eight has worked well. Uh, I see a whole different aspect from every one of you. You all think differently, and I'm glad to see I wanted to call you Ben. I didn't. <laughs> Michael, uh, I'm glad to see a, another young one here because we get a whole different aspect from them. But I like the old opinion, too, because I have many, as you know. But I think putting it to a vote's a waste of time and money because we've done that before. Did we vote on eight before? Was the vote eight versus five before? Or was it? did it default to eight? It was eight or five we voted on. It was actually not an official election. So it was held and then there was a lot of discussion. Actually five was what won. And then there was a lot of discussion and the current sitting commissioners didn't change anything. So therefore it reverted to eight. So that's not exactly what yeah. you're saying there, right? We did vote. Yes. We did vote. People, the commission thought people were confused by the question on the ballot. This is what I've been told yes. as recently yes. as last yes. week. Well, we have four wards. We'd have five member council, council members. You the four ward, four councilmen, election. Four, uh, a councilman from each ward and a, and a mayor at large is... You could, you could do five with a voting mayor. It would just be basically an at-large councilman. Or you could do... 
Or you could do, I mean, there's any number, but uh, again, I don't really have a dog in this fight. I'm not, I don't have any feelings one way or the other, but if we do proceed, I, I think we should proceed the way that Sid is saying here um, and start with a public forum and see and see where we go, but, but also have a plan or at least two plans or three plans and council members come up with what their plan would be and let people talk about those specific plans um, because we might all have a different plan and then we can get the city input on these different plans if you were to put it on a regularly scheduled election, what would the cost be to the city? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, they would. And I just don't see what's wrong with what we have. I don't necessarily either. What I'm telling you is I'm, a, I'm an elected representative of people and they are telling me over and over that they would like for me to voice this opinion. That's, and that's what I'm doing. Nobody in my said Who all has been up for re-election? Ha have you ever been ran against? Yeah. Uh, I don't know who I had anyone run against. Did anybody run against you last time you ran? Somebody ran against me last time uh, I ran. I don't well, I the last time you ran? Bob, have you had any? Did have you had anybody run against you? Sid, what's the easiest logistics to do this? At a, a, an election or outside of an election, because depending on the, how the vote comes in, I mean that would be something I would also take Roxanne's advice on. But I would think logistically it would be a better to do this kind of out of cycle, because then you would know that going into whatever cycle you are you're doing how that election will be that might be shaped a little bit differently than if you did it because if we did it in November then we'd have to figure out if it did pass to go to say five just for that sake then how do you you almost have to go back to the drawing board and restart cycles again and because you don't want everybody leaving at the same time and some people are going to have to be elected for a two-year term and some are going to have to be elected for a four-year term so it almost be easier I, th I think to do it out of cycle so then you know going into the cycle that okay we have an election these people are only going to be elected for a two-year term that's what i'm thinking you I know think but too. i don't know what's your thoughts roxanne well and that's that's part of the problem because june 1st is the deadline for filing for office once those people have filed they have to be on the ballot they're on the ballot and then they the public is voting for that person to serve the term that has been published. So you can't legally pull that person from a term that they've been elected to. So you would have to do it, like Sid said, coming up probably the next, like the next cycle of election. I don't know that we could get it done this time and well, change. I don't see any the, reason to rush it either. Yeah. I mean, I don't I think it's something that needs to be rushed. I think it's sure. I personally think we got more problems to worry about than what this is even taking up time in our meeting right now. Just open up a can of worms. I mean, I think governing body size is a pretty important topic. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I guess if we can spend three to four months on chickens, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be more than acceptable to spend, spend a little bit of time on this one. Chickens. <laughs> and, and by the way, if I would have been in that meeting, we'd have had chickens. Is this something maybe we want to, we could uh, talk about again next week or next meeting and then kind of decide if we want to move forward on I that? I, wouldn't, I mean, it seems like we have a pretty 
I mean, everybody has pretty solid <laughs> opinions on, I think, what they want. So would the next logical step be to c come up with concrete ideas to submit and then go yeah, to the we public? We still have some of those notes from that original char mm -hmm. charter ordinance um, committee that I was on. I know I still have the plan that I was most in favor of, which was six and a mayor. It was one from each ward, two at large, and a mayor at large. So I know I still have some of that stuff and I may have some of that other paperwork still I'll be happy to to look and see what I've still got in my notes the public inputs the most important thing to me so I the quicker we get to that forum the well and that's kind of why I suggested um, kind of having a guided conversation at the public forum saying okay you know what we've we've heard this let's discuss what where are the where are the what do we like about the current setup what don't we like why do we and why do we not like those things and then have them also talk about, um, you know, okay, what are some suggestions that they have? So then we, when we come back, we know that, hey, we heard from, we had 40 people at this and almost every one of them wanted a five member. What kind of, what five member, what does it look like? And that conversation council can then have about, or it may be that, you know what, we had two people show up. It's not worth the, you know, we're not going to pursue it anymore, whatever. But I, I would, I kind of, I guess my vision of, of that would be is you'd have some tables and have some guided conversations, p people facilitating those conversations and reporting back to the group so that you kind of get a, con you walk out of there to, out of a, with a consensus of that public forum of, you know what, they, they w do want to see it reduced. You may or may not have a number that they target at, but at least then that helps co uh, counsel further their conversation about, okay, here's the numbers that we're going to look at. Sid, can, I mean, just an idea, historically or, you know, <clears throat> data gathering for the state of Kansas, can we look at that and the state and say, okay, you know, 23% of the state has five-man councils or seven-man councils or whatever it is, and maybe skip ahead on some of this? I mean, I'm sure somebody's done that already. Yeah, I think we can gather some of that. Um, I will, s just as an uh, as a different perspective of that, this community should decide what it feels is the best to govern it, not necessarily what is best for other communities. But we can. I know that I already there is already a word document that has that we already have kind of started that. Well, that has some of the area around here and four to five thousand. It's just that maybe some towns our size have already worked through some of right. the growing pains. Yeah. Yeah, we've like I said, we've got a partial list, but we can kind of expand that and and try to and maybe even look at more specifically those communities that are in our size range, what they're doing if there was a specific reason why they did the form of government that they did. Uh, I would just like to know why people don't like what we have. I haven't heard any valid reason. Uh, I why do you change if you don't have some reason? I don't know. They think it's, generally speaking, the comments and the feedback that I have received is that it's a too, the council's too large in order to uh, attract a large pool of quality candidates. That's mostly put up there. If you reduced it, you could consider paying. That's that's another option. If you reduced it, um, the one thing I hear back and forth, I go to most of the council meetings and I read the paper from front to back. Me too. And I am all the time talking about something that happened. And you know what I get? Where'd you find that out? At the council meeting. It's on TV, you can get it. It's in the paper, you can get it. And I would say 90% of the people in this town do not care. I don't mean that mainly, I'm just saying it's a fact. And 
I would say 10% may want to gripe like crazy or be in the know, but that's it. So what you're going to get is a vote of about 10% or the naysayers. Now that's just my opinion, but I'm telling you, I'm around this town a whole lot. I'd also like to plug, because it got brought up, we're also on YouTube now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you do have a really good point. With all as many people that are on this council, how many clubs and activities are represented? Because we really don't share very many activities with this group. Would council maybe I could do some of that research you suggested, Joel, and um, then kind of put that in a memo or something for council, and then we'll bring it back to council for another discussion. We don't have to; it may not be next week or or uh, or next meeting, or it may be sometime in June when we can have that again or something. Would that work? That sound good to everybody? I think that's fine. Okay. Thank you, Sid. Perfect. All right. New business. Compactor truck bid. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, Solid Waste Department is seeking to uh, replace their two seven, 2007 um, model trash compactor truck. I uh, went and solicited bids and had uh, four different vendors provide bids for us. And the lowest bid was from Merle Kelly Ford. And staff is just seeking the approval of the purchase of a new Ford F5, F750 at, and new Way 20 RL Cobra, which is basically the body style for Merle Kelly Ford for the uh, total price of $77,929, which also includes a trading allowance for the existing unit. And Mr. Dan Leslie, he, the street and alley superintendent who also oversees the solid waste department is here for questions. I'm not very savvy about uh, these kind of trucks, but is, is this a complete truck or do you have to install anything else on it? No, this will be a turnkey, the chassis and the packer body. We ordered all together. Uh, the only thing we'll have to do this truck is put our stickers and the two-way radio in it. Everything uh, we asked for in the bids, everybody was able to supply. Merle Kelly Ford is working with a company called Elliott Equipment out of Kansas City that sells the new way. Uh, as far as I know, we've never had a new way packer body. We've had uh, the pack moors. We've had load masters. Uh, we had a Heil when I first started here. So they're all pretty much the same anymore. Um, we would prefer to stay with the F-750 Ford basically because Merle Kelly's they're just down the road. Yeah. And they come in cheaper than everybody else too. Gave us a good trade on our old one. So. Our last truck that we bought, how old is it? Uh, the other one is uh, five years. We trade out every 10. We keep one, what we call the primary truck, for five years, and then we put it back as a secondary. And, uh, doesn't seem like five years ago that you bought that truck. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Correct and me if I'm wrong, at some point this year, too, we had them both broke down. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we sure that's, did. That's that what was, I thought uh, to you. Okay. It's not a, yeah, we're a little more important in the mail service, I believe. Right. Because uh, <laughs> when we're just a little bit late, people are calling City Hall wanting to know where we're at. So we try to keep good trucks. Like I say, we don't have full-blown mechanics and everything's computerized nowadays. So we try to keep good truck unders. But yeah, that's not a good thing when that happens. And, and this is already uh, budgeted for? Yes, okay. we've been putting money back for the last four years on this and capital outlaid some of it this year. The money that we have in reserve, the extra, we'll just put that toward the other truck and give us a little start on that. I would make a motion that we approve the purchase of a new Ford F-750 and a new way 20 RL from Ford for the total 
price of $77,929, which also includes a trade-in allowance for the existing year. I would second that motion. All right. We've got a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? I just have one question. The, uh, sorry, I didn't ask just a second ago. It, it, is there a reason Twin doesn't bid on a job like this? Are they not outfitted for they, it? Uh, they're not a big truck dealer. Okay. You uh, have to have that. And I come to find out when we were doing this, Merle Cowley, uh, they no longer can sell tandem axle trucks. The F-750 is the bigger truck as they can sell, but it's still considered a larger truck. I believe uh, Twins can sell a 450, maybe a 550, which is a ton and a half. That's about as big as they can go. So we have to go through that type of dealer. Earl Kelly works on bigger trucks too, though. They, that yes, they have a very shop. good uh, service department that, yeah, that we've become very well known with. They're good guys, though. And RVB, matter of fact, you probably had on your appropriations. We uh, this truck we're getting rid of. We had to have the uh, air dryer rebuilt and the purge valve fixed, but we had to go ahead and do it because we wanted the truck operational. And RVB was able to slide us in the next day, so we use both of them. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. New business item B. Write off of uncollectible accounts. Okay, we talked about last meeting about the Collection Bureau of Kansas. Um, part of that is to process before you approve them is to write off the bad debts that are either deceased individuals or in bankruptcy because we can't legally collect on those. There's no sense passing them on to the collection agency and having them sent back. Um, and I've got that on there for you, the $2,080 on deceased and then $44,160. They haven't been written off in several, several years, so. Um, this total, how many years is that? It's probably a good 13, 14 years. Okay, how much would you think that we add a year in? Yeah, I see the 531,000 is, is in the back. Yeah. How much would what, you guess we add a year? What did I tell you, Aaron? I'm sorry I didn't bring that number with me. I, uh, I think it was right around 55,000. I'm just going off of memory. Does that sound right? Yeah. 55,000 a year? Yeah. A sizable chunk there. And, and we're good at collecting with the set-off program. It's just the only option we have. And like I said, we're in line behind all the other government so, entities that are ahead of us. So mm -hmm. when somebody does take bankruptcy and they come back and want to connect their utilities again, how do you handle that? We, we, our attorney told us we legally cannot collect the bankruptcy even though they owe it to us. Otherwise, if, you know, I move back to town and I owe a debt, we do get collect that before they can move in, but. It's 55,000 each year. For the utilities, I think the total is 518 for 245, and it looks like the total for the court it's 446 with 4,000 each year. So, so we'll need two motions: one to write off these accounts, and then one to accept CVB. We have. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right, Without further discussion, I'll make a move to approve the write-off of our accounts receivable for both the bankruptcy and the deceased accounts at a total of forty-six thousand two hundred forty dollars and fifty-eight cents. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Hey, Roxanne, would we ever do anything about the uh, two point three percent? on the credit card deal yet? No, I haven't yet. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what's a good option. With the the people that are on automatic withdrawal, our software company says they can't charge them. So I don't know. How does the county do? They don't. You don't have an automatic withdrawal system. Like, have you checked with Well, I know that, cities? but I mean when they, when they pay with a credit card. They charge. 
a very large sum. Yeah, yeah. I know that. they do. <laughs> yes. Usually, I think they go through the state on every one of their transactions, like we do on our online, and it's two and a half percent. But two and a half percent of your taxes is quite a bit of money. But, and I hate to just revert to that system because the other system works through our system and it saves a step for us. But about 15, I know, yeah. And um, I've just, I don't know if it would be, we've talked about it in our office, if it would be a good idea just to do a set fee for everybody. A lot of cities do a $2 charge and just $2 every time. I, me personally, you mean, you I'm mean on the person using the credit card, two dollars. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I am on. I have my credit card on file there. Mm -hmm. I would prefer the two dollars, and I wouldn't really consider that a big deal as a service fee. Yeah. Versus like, is this going to be two and a half percent of blank and you know of yeah, X trying to figure all that. Um, it, it probably if you said, hey, there's a two dollar service fee every month for this. I think that's yeah. fair. I, I would probably I just would leave my card on. It. And we, you know, we do checking also, so it is a free service. So if they didn't want us to do that, we could go to checking. But I like to build up those. Because you can automatically do draw too. from your checking account, mm -hmm. but not your yes. credit card account. That don't cost you nothing. Doesn't Correct. cost the city nothing. Right? Is that true? The bank gives us a management fee for handling checks, but they don't specify. For handling checks, Bankers. but not automatic withdrawal. <laughs> Yes, they do. Yes, both. Both. Mm hmm The bank, yes. <laughs> How long is a, an account pass due before you would turn it over to CBK? Our, tip, um, our current statute says you will send two notices to the customer. So their final bill goes out. We send a letter. Hey, if you need to pay this, we send a second letter that says, if you do not pay within this amount of time, you will be sent to our set-off program, and we'll just adjust our letter. So it's about? Uh, 60, within 60 days, usually, we're sending it to set-off, so. They come in and pay a part of it. Does that prevent them from being sent to collections? Is That's something we'll have to talk about internally. Currently, we go ahead and send it to set off by the deadline. That way, we're not trying to keep track of who owes us payments and who doesn't. They can make payments anytime to us, and we report it to set off. It just reduces their debt with set off. And set off doesn't charge us a fee if the customer pays in house. So, but. I wonder why it is not. Uh in our uh, service to, uh, when you sell a property and it transfers to another person, mm -hmm. and there's a utility debt on that, mm -hmm. we're not putting that on the deed. Why are we not doing that? Because we don't have to put it on the deed. Well, you can't collect it if it's we sure it do. through. Uh, you collect it from the new owner, though. We do, yes. And that's not right. Well, what we try to do, and all the realtors in town have been told, and they call in frequently asking these questions, is, hey, there is a utility bill on this account, and what they do either at closing or they handle it beforehand. But I would say 95% of the time the realtor is paying that debt through closing costs. When a person buys title insurance, that's why you buy title insurance. True. And then that debt should not be able to be collected if you got title insurance. The city should put a lien on the abstract and they would get their money. I know yeah. I've experienced this twice. Right. Because I buy a lot of homes. But we don't <clears throat> legally have to and it would be an extra legal expense for us. I don't know. Well, we ate, they ate a $670 utility. Had a, I bought a home. I didn't know the city no utilities for it. I just bought it because sometimes you don't go through a realtor. You just pay cash for a house. Well, it had a six hundred and seventy dollar utility bill against it. Did the title insurance not check it? Well, there's no lien. The city doesn't put a lien on a title, so the title insurance doesn't know that. Okay. That's exactly what my point is. I mean, on a large amount like that, 
we should put a lien on the title. How, how, long, how much does it cost to put a lien on title? No idea. It shouldn't cost very much. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, I, I didn't have to pay the $670. I refused it. I didn't use the utility. Six hundred and seventy dollars. Now, if if that would have had a lien on the abstract, six hundred and seventy dollars. So I think it would be a pretty good investment if you can collect six seventy. And I know it don't cost that much to get a lien on the abstract. Yeah, if, I mean, if it sells, the only and the only problem with that, if it sells at a tax sale, then we get zero. But the way we do it in house. We would get. We still get six hundred and seventy dollars. Put a lien on it unless it was past due. And lots of times these aren't past due. They just don't pay them. Yeah. Don't, I don't understand it. It's a due date. Oh, it was way past due. That's different. And that's been a few years ago that I went to. A, I went to a city councilman. And he got it. Reversed because he thought it was ridiculous. Hmm. Is there, if we're discussing this agreement now, is that what we're doing? Is, is would there be a way? Is, is it a requirement that they have the thirty percent surcharge on municipal fines and fees, or is that something that they can do because the statute says they can? Yes, they can. That's it, that's their fee to collect it. But if we, if the Council wanted to, we could have the same approach with municipal fees as we do with the utilities, where the 30% comes from the whole instead of in addition to? We could, yes, if we wanted to adopt an ordinance to do such. I think for them to assess a fee to the customer. We were no, he's, talking the, he's talking the reverse of that. To which we're you have the 100% charge only, and then oh, you'd only okay. collect 70% from the city on the municipal fees. Oh, municipal, municipal court, no. no. The, the statute says you have to collect the 100% the of the court fine. Okay, because I just, this says the municipal courts can charge the cost, so I didn't know if that meant must. Sure, they. I'm, I'm not sure on that. Um, I kind of am like yeah. Roxanne. I kind of think that that's the standard. Maybe we can pass an ordinance to say that we're going to waive that, but we'd have to visit with with Chad on that to know that. Detail. I guess my thoughts are, and I'm appreciative of anything that can be collected. But if folks are having a hard enough time getting us the hundred percent, the adding thirty percent, I don't know if. I've, I would want to do that. I mean, if, we're, if it's the same philosophy that we're doing for utilities, it's if we said if we can collect 100% and in other words, they're going to pay 130% if they have to go through court on municipals on utilities that we would collect 70 and the bureau would collect 30. But that's still better than zero. Yeah, I would. If I, if I this, hear what you, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, just, I just would like to. See, this is a t sorry, this is a tough situation. I actually have some calls on this this week that I kind of am surprised at. But at the end of the day, I don't think we can continue taking a $55,000 in bad debt, you know, every year. That takes away from services from the community. So, But I would like to see if it's possible to have the yes. same philosophy with both. Just mm -hmm. pursue sure. 100 and reduce by 30 on each. I'll check it out. So do we need to table this then until we get that answer back, I That'd take it? probably be best. I'm going to make a motion that we table the CBK contract until the definite time of next, do you think you can get that by next meeting? Until the definite time of May 22nd. Okay, we, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay. Motion carries. Appreciate it, Sid. All right. John, do you have anything else for us tonight? I do not. Thank you very much. Nancy? This might be a question for Corey. I'm not sure. The bleachers at the baseball 
field what's the do we have an update on what we're doing with all of that I was asked by somebody so just trying to get some information or is Donna starting another fundraising campaign <laughs> Yes. I've heard that. I hadn't either. No one that is. Okay. <laughs> no, he, they, nobody's approached the city. Uh, I've talked to uh, the high school principal, mm -hmm. Stacy Fager. Um, they're going through some transition, obviously, with right. personnel right now. Right. But my intent is, after the ball season's over, to get with the school and see what works for them. We actually don't have any rec ball or city sponsored events really on Diamond 3. It's okay. all pretty much school district or American Legion. So uh, the thought there is hopefully we can do some cost sharing with the school and figure out what they need because I think the, probably the size of them is overkill for what's being used. But uh, hopefully we're, we've got enough over there now. I guess to get I was just through. wanting to make sure it's at least in the, you know, yeah. in, the, yeah. in the plans so that we get that taken care of and That's, we don't just have yeah. busted up bleachers over there yeah that's the hope and, and it may be the case that we figure out a way to put caps on them I know Jason got cost on that and it was rather expensive yeah. so we may just look at it and put in a one half the size structure to get get uh, adequate space for them so we're working on it with the school district okay thank you I guess that's all I have all right thank you Beverly um, the only thing I can say is that uh, I went to the ribbon Excellent. Thank you. Bob? No, I got nothing tonight. All right. Don? Nothing tonight. All right. Mike, have you got anything else for us? No, I'm good. Uh -huh. All right. Sandy? All right, Aaron. Yeah, I have a few questions or comments. Um, it's been raining quite a bit, and I've got calls from some of the people who do business at the strip on Garfield and State. Sorry, I don't have the address. Uh, across from the old IGA parking lot, houses the B and B Cafe and the weightlifting. And so I went out there when it was raining, and they have a flood issue. The water backing up from that little creek in between <clears throat> it'd be the east end of the structure uh, back in behind it back in behind it what the end of that building is actually on I think city right away is that correct and I'd like to see staff I understand that, but the land could be adjusted, or could we install something that would prevent the businesses from having the water come in? We wouldn't balk if it was GNW asking, would we? I think we need to have the same approach for existing businesses that we do for the new ones. Uh, um, Corey, how about if you if we go out there and take a look at it? And see what we think. And I, I agree. I, I, it's what I saw too. But it's nothing heavy equipment can not take care of, right? And it's a little bit of engineering, probably. We could at least we could take a look at it and. Okay. We sound good. We have a lot of water problems in that area. Lots of water problems. Uh, are you saying that we should just leave them alone, or no? I say we should address them. But it's there's there's water problems all down that State Street. Yeah. We got inaccurate, inaccurate, inadequate draining system there. It's bad. that's going into the creek is not big enough but the creek's not getting away fast enough as far as I'm concerned because the water is going to come up the pipes backwards if the creek's up higher than the pipes I know I just think maybe we 
I think we we owe it to tax-paying citizens and business folk to maybe we should do a study. Maybe it costs us a little money, but at least we have an answer. I vacuumed water out of my building many a time, and I pay a real good chunk of tax on it. And the other, only other thing is, do did we satisfy? Have we given G and W everything that they've requested for as far as permits go? Is there anything that they would be waiting on us to deliver to them? They've got the permits. We've been able to go a long time ago. They so we just we don't know. Just waiting. Thanks. That's all I have. Which Very made good. the first one we called? Sid, do you have anything else for us? Yeah, I just was going to make a note that I did uh, send out that purchasing policy. And I didn't put, well, I was going to put it on this meeting, and I decided to wait since we were going to have a new member. Um, but we'll uh, probably bring that up at the, the next meeting. So if there's any, um, and if you didn't get that or you lost it and needed me to send it again, I can sure do that. I also sent out a summary of the strategic planning. So if you have any questions or comments on that, I would be happy to take those and, and tweak that document a little bit. And I just wanted to say, I uh, last week, at the end of last week, I went to the KMU conference. Um, and that was a really good conference. I went to the rate structural and financial planning workshop and uh, had a session on the state water plan and the main thing out of that is is they're still fighting to try to get funding to do what the state water plan says that they should be doing um, and also uh, had a legislative update one thing that is out there that I would say is concerning to me as a as a staff person of a local government is that there has been a proposal to put a charge on utility bill for residential and commercial customers that will cover school funding. And I'm all for funding schools, but that means that Roxanne is now going, potentially could be collecting the funding for, the, for the, the school, have to submit it to the state, and then they would, I, I'm not sure that that's a, it's an idea to generate some dollars, but it's maybe not the best thing out there. I, I just wanted to kind of let you guys know that that is out there and it's been, um, and as one person said that, you know, what doesn't look real good now at the end of the session in the wee hours might look really good as a money source. So it may, <laughs> it may still raise, raise its head there. So anyway. Um, so, so do we need to call our representative? I would, that I think is a personal choice for each of you. I'm just saying from our standpoint, I think it would be difficult. We would end up having to um, change our billing software, potentially, depending on what we'd have to do, we may have to go now to a full sheet of paper because it doesn't fit on our little postcard. Um, and the software change, I, it's plus just the every, the, the monthly headache of collecting that money and submitting it to the state. And I think it would be a, it would be a concern from a staff level, I think, so. Once they do it, they'll To every it. city. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Put more burden. That's all I had. All right. Well, thank you, Sid. Don? I'd like to make a motion for adjournment. Second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries. Uh, meeting adjourned. Thank so. you.